Do you think Robert Wagner has ever told the truth of exactly what happened? What are they talking about? He's a bear cat, ain't he? Do you feel bad? Look over his face. Robert Wagner, the iconic leading man from the 60s wow. TV show, It Takes a Thief. A course of hydrotherapy and you'll be back in business. From the glitz of his television stardom to the heart-wrenching tragedy that rocked his world when his wife, Natalie Wood, passed away, Robert's life took a dramatic turn. Once adored by fans, he found himself under suspicion and his fan base got less. Now, at the age of 93, Robert has chosen to break his silence. Nobody heard anything. Sharing candid and sincere revelations about the heartbreaking events surrounding his wife's departure. Dive into the intriguing details of Robert Wagner's life, witness the unexpected twists, and stay glued to your screen as he unfolds the truth in this compelling video. Early Life of Robert Wagner Robert Wagner is a colossal force in the entertainment realm, boasting three mega-hit TV series and an impressive catalog of both feature and television films. With a career spanning over 70 years, Wagner has graced the screen in over a hundred films and made countless TV appearances, cementing his status as a true icon. Back in his early days at 20th Century Fox, Wagner caught the eye of Daryl F. Zanuck, who cast him in with a song in my heart. Despite a brief appearance, Wagner's portrayal of a crippled soldier responding to Susan Hayward's song created an instant buzz. Spencer Tracy, impressed by Wagner's work in Beneath the Twelve Mile Reef, personally requested him for roles in Broken Lance and The Mountain. Wagner's film credits are a powerhouse, featuring hits like Dragon, The Bruce Lee Story, The Pink Panther, Midway, and the Austin Powers Trilogy, where he played the villainous number two. On the small screen, Wagner proved his mettle in three long-running series. Nominated for an Emmy, he brought suave cat burglar Alexander Mundy to life in It Takes a Thief alongside Malachi Throne and Fred Astaire. As con man turned detective Pete Ryan in Switch with Eddie Albert and Sharon Gless, Wagner showcased his versatility. Winning hearts as the debonair millionaire detective Jonathan Hart in Heart to Heart with Stephanie Powers, Wagner's charisma shone brightly. Post Heart to Heart, he donned the executive producer hat, delivering eight highly rated movies based on the series. The 90s marked his entry into the Austin Powers universe as the villain's number two, introducing him to a fresh wave of fans. Television remained Wagner's domain, with standout performances on the top-rated series NCIS, where he portrayed Anthony DiNasso, Senior Wagner's TV brilliance extends beyond series, featuring in top-rated miniseries like Windmills of the Gods with Jacqueline Smith, Pearl with Angie Dickinson, Love Among Thieves with Audrey Hepburn, and There Must Be a Pony, where he also served as executive producer alongside Elizabeth Taylor. Collaborating with legends like Sir Laurence Olivier, he starred in the television adaptation of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, where his late wife Natalie Wood also shared the screen. Beyond screens big and small, Wagner embarked on a world tour with Stephanie Powers, performing A.R. Gurney's Love Letters and becoming trailblazers as the first to launch the tour internationally. His love for the play endured, leading him to continue performing it at charity events worldwide alongside his wife, actress Jill St. John. In a career that spans generations, Wagner's star remains undimmed, leaving an indelible mark on the entertainment landscape. With a resume that reads like a Hollywood Hall of Fame, he stands tall as a timeless icon, captivating audiences with his enduring talent. Early Life of Natalie Wood Natalie Wood, born Natalie Zakarenko on July 20, 1938, in San Francisco, had a unique journey from her Russian roots to Hollywood stardom. Her mother, Maria Zudalova, originally from Barnaul, came from a family of soap and candle manufacturers. Amidst the Russian Civil War, they sought refuge in Harbin, China, before eventually settling in the U.S. before marrying Natalie's father. Maria was previously wed to Alexander Tatilov, an Armenian mechanic. After their ship voyage to the U.S. in 1930, they parted ways in 1936. Her father, a carpenter from Usurisk, had a challenging background as well. His father, a chocolate factory worker, lost his life in a street fight in Vladivostok during the Russian Civil War. 
After this tragedy, Natalie's paternal family fled to Shanghai and later moved to Vancouver. Eventually, they settled in the U.S. in 1933. Her parents, despite her mother still being married to Tatilov, tied the knot in February 1938, just five months before Natalie's arrival. A year later, her father changed the family name to Gurdon. In 1943, the Guardians made Santa Rosa, California, their home. Her journey to stardom began when she caught the attention of a film crew during a shoot in downtown Santa Rosa. RKO executives David Lewis and William Goetz, impressed by her talent, decided to change her surname to Wood to make it more appealing to English-speaking audiences. This change was also a nod to filmmaker Sam Wood. Her Hollywood journey started as a child actress, and her rise to fame was swift. Despite her complex family history, she remained focused on her career. In 1946, her sister Svetlana, later known as Lana Wood, was born in Santa Monica, and she too ventured into acting. Natalie Wood's life was marked by twists and turns, from her Russian heritage to her Hollywood success. Her family's journey from Russia to the US and the early days in Santa Rosa shaped the foundation of a star who would shine brightly in the world of cinema. A Hollywood love story. Natalie Wood graced the silver screen for four epic decades, kicking off as a child actress in the 1940s movies like The Ghost and Mrs. Muir and Miracle on 34th Street. In 1955, Life magazine dubbed her the most beautiful teenager in the world after her iconic role in Rebel Without a Cause. Her leading men included James Dean, Warren Beatty, Steve McQueen, and Robert Redford. Notably, she shared the screen and love with Robert Wagner, her real-life beau, in productions such as a 1976 TV version of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Wagner, now 93, has been married to his third wife, actress Jill St. John, since 1990. Interestingly, his first love was screen legend Barbara Stanwyck, a romance that ended in heartbreak. Wagner, part of the old studio system, encountered Hollywood's most legendary women, from Elizabeth Taylor to Marilyn Monroe, in a career spanning highs and lows. Despite his leading man looks, Wagner found success in TV after a film career slowdown. His versatility shines in roles like Henchman No. 2 in Austin Powers and as Agent Donazzo's father on NCIS. Wagner and Wood's love story began in 1956 when the old-fashioned studio system set them up on a date for publicity. Despite the arranged start, they hit it off immediately. In 1957, the duo tied the knot in a secretive ceremony in Scottsdale, Arizona. Labeled the Glittering Union of the 20th Century, their marriage hit a rough patch, leading to a divorce in 1962. Wood confessed, I always knew he was okay. It was myself I didn't know about. At 24, Wood was one of Hollywood's highest paid stars. Her romantic escapades included dating Frank Sinatra at 15 and having an affair with Rebel Without a Cause director Nicholas Ray at 16. Her love life continued to capture headlines with alleged trysts on film sets affairs with Beatty and attempts with McQueen. After her divorce from Wagner in 1962, Wood delved into psychoanalysis, joking that her therapy bills equaled the defense budgets of Central American nations. A visit from Warren Beatty in 1966, seeking her for Bonnie and Clyde led her into a dark period, culminating in a barbiturate incident. Yet she found a renewed zest for life. Wood married British producer Richard Gregson in 1969, with Robert Redford as best man. Their daughter Natasha was born in 1970. Meanwhile, Wagner had tied the knot with Marion Marshall in 1963. Natalie Wood's journey, marked by triumphs and tumultuous romances, left an indelible mark on Hollywood's golden age. A tragedy and reunion. Wood and Wagner's paths crossed again in 1970, years after their initial split. At a solo attended dinner party, Wood, six months pregnant with Natasha, and Wagner, freshly separated, rekindled their connection. After ensuring Wood's safe return home, Wagner expressed his happiness about her pregnancy. The following day, he sent flowers, setting a positive tone. In 1971, Wood and her then husband, Gregson, mutually decided to part ways. Wagner and Wood began regular phone conversations leading to an invitation to Wagner's Palm Desert residence in January 1972. This marked a turning point, 
Surprising everyone, they made a public appearance at the Oscars in April, followed by an adventurous voyage to England on the Queen Elizabeth II, delayed by a storm. Their synchronized public appearance triggered speculations, but Wagner attributed it to the importance of timing, keeping the planned reunion under wraps. Despite financial challenges on Wagner's end, Wood, financially secure, didn't want to delay. Three months later, they exchanged vows again on July 16, 1972, in a low-key ceremony aboard the Ramblin' Rose, a 55-foot yacht. Setting up their abode in Beverly Hills, they welcomed daughter Courtney in 1974. Wood, in a 1976 interview, revealed her partial retirement, emphasizing the prioritization of family over professional commitments. Their friend Mark Crowley observed their newfound ability to confront challenges and believe in themselves. However, tragedy struck five years later when Natalie Wood passed away. Tributes poured in from Hollywood stars, praising her commitment to family. He expressed profound regret for not being there for her during her final moments. Natasha Gregson Wagner, reflecting on her mother, shared memories of a close-knit relationship and her mother's unwavering dedication to motherhood. Despite lingering questions surrounding Wood's death, Gregson Wagner remained focused on honoring her mother, launching a fragrance named Natalie in her memory in 2016. Amidst the unresolved questions, Captain Davern suggests jealousy between Wagner and Walken, leading to a confrontation. New witnesses seem to corroborate Davern's account. Walken, in a rare comment, expressed the desire to make efforts count, avoiding an unnecessary demise. Detective Dwayne Rasour, who worked on the case, consistently dismissed suspicions of foul play, asserting Wood's death as an accidental drowning. Despite persistent questions, Razur remains resolute in his belief that it was a tragic accident, refusing to entertain notions of deliberate harm. Natalie Wood's Enduring Mystery Natalie Wood once confessed, I've always been terrified, still am, of water, dark water, seawater. That chilling statement echoed through the 1970s, and little did she know, it would eventually tie her name to one of Hollywood's most enduring mysteries. In November 29, 1981, the Oscar-nominated actress met an untimely demise at the age of 43. Initially labeled as an accidental drowning, the conclusion crumbled over time. Wood's final moments became a baffling enigma, fueled by public intrigue that has persisted for decades. During Thanksgiving weekend, Wood, her husband Robert Wagner, and Christopher Walken, her co-star in the last film she ever made, found themselves aboard the 60-foot yacht, Splendor. The only witness, Splendor's captain, Dennis Davern, added a layer of suspense by claiming he overheard a heated argument between Wood and Wagner. In 2011, the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department Homicide Bureau reopened the case, prompted by new information and Lana Wood's insistence that her sister, gripped by a fear of water, wouldn't be tying a dinghy to the yacht voluntarily. The death certificate, initially citing accidental drowning, was amended in 2012 to include drowning and other undetermined factors. Tips flooded in during the reopened investigation, and in 2018, Wagner became a person of interest, raising suspicions about the events leading to Wood's demise. The night before her death, the trio dined on Catalina Island. Wagner later detailed in his memoir a political argument with Walken, Wood's subsequent exit, and her absence upon his return to their stateroom, an eerie prelude to the tragedy. His search for his wife led to the discovery of the missing dinghy, yet Wood, who expressed being petrified of the ocean, was found fully clothed in the water the next morning. Wagner suggested she struggled with the dinghy in her sleep, slipping on the algae-covered steps and hitting her head against the boat. An autopsy revealed Wood had consumed seven or eight glasses of wine. Fresh bruises and an abrasion on her cheek hinted at a possible fall. The chief medical examiner, Thomas Noguchi, declared it an accident in 1981, theorizing that she clung to the dinghy but succumbed to the weight of her parka. As the case continued to linger, Wagner expressed his enduring grief in 2017, stating, When Natalie died, I thought my life was over. Natalie was such a special, wonderful woman. Even in 2011, he welcomed efforts for answers. Decades later, the mystery endures, 
a haunting tale of dark waters, unanswered questions, and the lingering shadow of Natalie Wood's tragic end. Robert on Natalie's death. Robert R.J. Wagner has finally spoken up against accusations surrounding his wife Natalie Wood's death. In a direct and no-nonsense response through a spokesperson, the 93-year-old Wagner condemned yacht captain Dennis Davern and Wood's sister Lana for their role in fueling speculations on the podcast Fatal Voyage, the mysterious death of Natalie Wood. Wagner's representative didn't mince words, slamming Davern and Lana as despicable human beings who are capitalizing on a tragic event in the Wagner family. The spokesperson didn't hold back, stating that they should be ashamed of themselves. This marks the first time Wagner has addressed the allegations since February, when he was identified as a person of interest in Wood's drowning death on November 28, 1981. The Los Angeles Sheriff's Department homicide detective Ralph Hernandez disclosed that new eyewitnesses have come forward with crucial information about the night Wood drowned. On that fateful night aboard the yacht Splendor, only Wood, Wagner, Captain Davern, and actor Christopher Walken were present. The new witnesses corroborate Davern's account, asserting that they saw an argument between Wagner and Wood near the boat's swim step before Wood vanished. Maintaining the confidentiality of these witnesses, Detective Hernandez emphasized their credibility, noting that they are not seeking attention or payment for interviews. Interestingly, two of them had to be actively sought out by investigators. Addressing Wagner's involvement, Hernandez highlighted that while Wagner provided an interview to the police in 1981, he has declined to participate in any interviews since the case was reopened in 2011. In contrast, Christopher Walken has cooperated with the police, providing a new interview that was deemed helpful in corroborating certain details from Davern's account. Dennis Davern, who has been revealing bombshells in the podcast, unequivocally stated that he believes Wagner killed Natalie Wood. Over the years, Davern pieced together the events of that night and became convinced of Wagner's guilt. He pointed to Wagner being the last one with Wood and raised concerns about bruises on Wood's body when he identified her the next morning. Wagner's initial story about Wood slipping into the water while securing a noisy dinghy has been challenged by Davern, who claims he was instructed to stick to that narrative. According to Davern, Wagner's jealousy over Wood's relationship with Walken led to a violent confrontation. The podcast also features Wood's sister Lana, who suggests that the situation escalated due to Natalie's resistance to harm. Lana believes that the altercation wasn't planned, but reached a point where Natalie was either struck or pushed. After the investigation into Wood's death was reopened, the chief medical examiner amended her death certificate to include drowning and other undetermined factors. The case continues to unravel, with new eyewitnesses adding weight to the claims against Wagner. Investigation. In the tapestry of time, a perplexing tale unfolds, weaving a narrative that spans over four decades, starting with the tragic night in 1981 that abruptly ended Natalie Wood's life. Initially relegated to a simple accident during a two-week investigation, the case took an unexpected turn in 2011. Fueled by newfound information, the Sheriff's Department boldly decided to revisit the circumstances, setting the stage for a cascade of revelations that would alter the trajectory of this enduring mystery. The turning point materialized in 2012 when Wood's death certificate underwent a profound modification, transcending the confines of an accidental drowning. The cause of death now bore the enigma of multiple undetermined factors, transforming what was once neatly categorized into an intricate puzzle. This modification injected a renewed sense of scrutiny into a case that had seemingly found closure decades earlier. Nicole Nishida's response to recently surfaced witness interviews further exposed a rift in the narrative surrounding that fateful night on the boat. While insufficient evidence hindered immediate arrest, the acknowledgement of a new sequence of events injected a renewed sense of intrigue into an already complex story. The passage of time had not dulled the curiosity surrounding the details of Wood's tragic end. Instead, it fueled a fresh wave of scrutiny into the circumstances that led to her untimely demise. The year 2018 marked a significant turning point, as the Sheriff's Department officially reclassified Wood's death as suspicious, 
This decision was anchored in interviews with individuals residing near the couple and those sharing the waters with them, introducing a new layer of complexity to the investigation. Wagner, once a Hollywood heartthrob, now found himself designated as a person of interest, a label not given lightly. Approaching 90 years old, Wagner's reluctance to cooperate with authorities added another layer of intrigue and complexity to an already intricate narrative. As we navigate through the intricacies of this prolonged saga, the layers of uncertainty surrounding the events of that tragic night captivate the imagination. The case's evolution, from an initial ruling of accidental death to a reclassified suspicious designation, underscores the elusive truth that has evaded resolution for over 40 years. The enigmatic circumstances surrounding Natalie Wood's death persist as a haunting puzzle, with each revelation raising new questions. Conflicting accounts from witnesses, the shift in the official cause of death, and the designation of Wagner as a person of interest all contribute to the mystique surrounding this enduring mystery. The passage of time has not diminished the intrigue surrounding Wood's untimely demise. If anything, it has only intensified the quest for answers, fueled by the desire to unravel the truth behind the conflicting narratives. As the investigation continues, the possibility of uncovering the events that transpired on that ill-fated night remains tantalizingly within reach. The persistent efforts of those seeking justice serve as a testament to the enduring impact of Natalie Wood's tragic end, leaving an indelible mark on the annals of Hollywood history. Each revelation, no matter how small, adds another piece to the intricate puzzle that is the mystery of Natalie Wood's death, inviting us to delve deeper into the complexities that shroud this enduring enigma. A Candid Exploration the perplexing circumstances surrounding the demise of the iconic Natalie Wood, the legendary actress who tragically met her end off the shores of Santa Catalina Island in 1981, we find ourselves in a narrative web of questions that far outnumber the answers. Natasha Gregson Wagner steps boldly into the limelight, determined to unravel the enigma that shrouds her mother's life and to shed light on the ominous night that changed everything. Her tool for this exploration is the HBO documentary, Natalie Wood, What Remains Behind, poised to captivate audiences on May 5 at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. The documentary takes a laser-focused approach, celebrating Natalie's radiant career as a Hollywood luminary. It pays homage to the indelible mark she left on the entertainment industry. Yet, this tribute doesn't shy away from the haunting events of that ill-fated night in 1981, when Natalie, at the age of 43, was discovered lifeless in the unforgiving waters. Natasha, fueled by an unwavering determination to uncover the truth, turns her lens toward her stepfather, Robert Wagner, who shared the yacht with Natalie on that ominous night. In a candid and emotionally charged interview captured by the documentary, Natasha confronts Robert about the events leading up to Natalie's mysterious disappearance. Robert takes us back to that night, recounting a dinner offshore with Natalie and actor Christopher Walken. An alcohol-fueled disagreement erupted between Robert and Christopher, with Natalie retiring below deck as they clashed. Resolution came later, but when Robert sought Natalie out, she and the yacht's dinghy had vanished without a trace. Nobody heard anything. Robert solemnly admits to Natasha, recounting the heart-wrenching moment when authorities confirmed Natalie's tragic fate. That night has gone through my mind so many times. Initially deemed an accident, Natalie's death took an unexpected turn in 2011 when the case was reopened. The Los Angeles coroner's office altered the cause from accidental drowning to drowning and other undetermined factors. By 2018, Robert found himself labeled a person of interest in the ongoing investigation. Natasha, however, emerges as a staunch defender of her stepfather in the documentary, breaking years of silence and putting an end to lingering speculation. Enough is enough, she asserts, expressing her unshakable belief that Robert would have willingly sacrificed his own life for Natalie had she been in distress. Robert, affirming Natasha's stance, declares, I never would have done anything to hurt her mother. In a poignant reflection on the intense interview, 
Natasha shares her motive for involving Robert in the discussion surrounding Natalie's tragic demise. The documentary becomes a platform for a candid conversation, an honest exchange that Natasha wanted to capture on camera. I wanted him to feel safe enough to unfold like a flower and be honest and show his humanity, she reveals. Despite the emotional toll, Natasha remains resolute in her decision to bring the truth into the light. The documentary serves as a cathartic journey for both Natasha and Robert, unraveling a difficult past and empowering them through the shared experience. In Natasha's words, when you take something and you put it into the light, it doesn't feel as hampering, and that's what we were doing. The truth, no longer concealed, becomes a source of strength and liberation for the duo, marking the culmination of a challenging but necessary exploration. Robert Wagner at 93. Wagner turned 93, and you guys turned up the awesome. Dressed sharply in a navy blue Ralph Lauren sweater, the heart-to-heart -heart legend dropped an Instagram video to dish out some heartfelt thanks for the birthday buzz. Chillin' in Aspen with his crew girls, son-in-law, granddaughter. Wagner laid it down. Thanks for making my birthday extra special. You guys rock. Keeping it real, he petted his dog and spilled. I can't tell you how much I appreciated it. It's been a wonderful birthday, and you all have made it extra special. You're thinking of me in such a special way. In signature style, Wagner wrapped it up. Thank you all for the birthday wishes. I love you all so much. Short, sweet, and straight from the heart. Rewind to 2016, Wagner spilled the Hollywood tea in his memoir, I Loved Her in the Movies, Memories of Hollywood's Legendary Actresses. The man had a golden ticket rubbing shoulders with Elizabeth Taylor and Marilyn Monroe. In his own words, I had this gift of meeting wonderful women and working with a lot of them and it was amazing. But the spotlight swung to Natalie Wood, his late wife. A roller coaster romance hitched in 57, split, then a comeback in 72. Wood's tragic exit in an 81 boating accident left a void. Wagner's memoir spilled the beans on Wood's joy, motherhood. Natalie was swept away by motherhood. It was a total home run for her. She was devoted to our girls. No fluff, no fuss. Wagner, soaking in the love, throwing us a glimpse of his Aspen birthday bash and flipping through the pages of his life with remarkable women. Keeping it real, Wagner style. Here's to 93. Cheers. We hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.